my name is Anayeli Gonzalez, and I welcome you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this important factor. Early education does matter. Now, let me start by asking you a question. Um, how much time do you spend with your child and, and every day? And if you don't have a child, how much time um, do you think a parent should spend with his child um, each day learning about activities, um, about school, talking about school, or just um, having um, interaction with a child? Now, you may be wondering, what is early childhood? And, well, I was asking the same thing when I started this project. And early childhood is the poor morning um, teaching and caring of young children. And usually, um, childhood in other nations, uh, it's between day when they were born all the way to five. But um, in the United States, it's considered when they were born all the way to age seven, which that's critical. Some facts um, that I would like to mention is 86% of the public schools uh, think that interaction uh, from the parents uh, with the child is the most important uh, factor of a child's life. It creates more um, higher attendance, graduation rates, um, more um, self-esteem, and um, it gets more communication between the parents and the teachers and the community. Um, as education dollars shrink, stages programs are grappling whatever to eliminate for school. Do we want early childhood education now or do we pay more later? Well, I say we want them now. Why? Well, um, I want to study a pediatrician and uh, that always has been my dream to study. So I really care about little children and I have like two little uh, siblings that I really love and care about them. So for me it's really important. Um, as you can see on this chart, um, these are different three programs that um, different um, countries has put on. Uh, for every dollar invested from the government, this is how much uh, the government gets back. As you can see, um, the participant, the society, and the government get back money from all the money they invested, which that's good. Uh, education programs do benefit um, the community, the government, and the participant. They get money back. Now some tips that you can uh, apply with your children every day is like um, when you're cooking, make them read recipes. Um, uh, it, they're going to have a hard time with some words, but it will get interesting to them. They will, um, they will struggle, they will cry sometimes, but if the parents <laughs> right there and you encourage them and be like, you can do it, I believe in you, they will do it. Uh, make them measure some stuff. Um, I tell them what grain to put. I mean, you should also read the instructions, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you go on road trips, also make them read the signs, give them a map. Um, as I mentioned before, always have a backup plan, because that doesn't work. We don't want you all to get lost. <laughs> so, yes. Um, instead of watching um, TV shows, um, make them watch out. Uh, educational TV shows, because those are helpful for the children. They may, they may not think that they're educational for the children, but they are. Uh, there's so many programs out there that the children can watch. And some, they can they teach them how to write, how to learn, how to draw. The kids may think it's fun, but they're really, really learning. Also, during the night, take a walk, make them read uh, letters. Um, when you get mail in, um, have them read the letters, not all the letter, but half of it. Also, read stories to them. Uh, have you can do a page you a page them, or you can make the child read all of it, and you can just be there for support. Development domains. There are five different development domains of children, which uh, relate to each other. There are referred as spice. I don't know about y'all, but spice makes me think about spicy foods. <laughs> so, yeah. Other uh, social, physical, intellectual, creative, and emotional. These are really um, the first stages of a children that need to learn. Then there's conjective development. As you can see, there's four stages of conjective development. The first one is sensory stage, proportional state, and concrete proportional stage, formal proportional stage which I want to focus between uh, sensory stage and proportional state because um, the first one is between the ages of birth all the way to ages two. The second one, uh, which is proportional, occurs between the ages of two to seven, which those are the most critical stages of um, kids where they can retain more information. 
a sensorial stage is when the child learns its language and learns proportional stage is when the child starts um, reading, writing, and all those things. So those are the most stages for me uh, as I was doing this project. Family readiness. Well, my uh, website is doing well, so I the, the, uh, found this chart which was much information, but I only want to focus on Caucasian and Hispanic people, which is nine years old and seven years old and four years old. As you can see, 40.7% of the Caucasians read to their child, and only 21.4% read to their um, kids. That's a huge difference. As, uh, I want more Hispanic parents to start reading to the children because they may not know that early childhood is important for the child and they, they just wait for them to go to school. But the sooner you start, the much better. As well, I focus on poverty status, which is in, in poverty, you know, which is 22.3% right to their child. And above our poverty was 35.8%. That's also a huge difference. Especially because some parents may not have that time, they may always be working with, and they may just get home all tired and be like, oh, I don't have time, and the child may be already asleep. Well, at least 20 minutes can make a difference in a child's life. <coughs> Graduation rate. As I said before, um, a child's life um, does affect how a parent is involved in schools. And as I said before, my website is Hispanic, so I want to uh, bilingual, so I want to focus on the Hispanic and the Caucasians. 63.5% of the Hispanics um, graduated, and as 61.0% um, graduate. That's a huge difference. I my bad. I said 81.0% graduated for Caucasians. That's a huge difference. So. I don't know what's happening to Hispanic parents. Um, they may just, they may not understand English um, well enough, or they may not um, know how to interact with the teachers, but that's a huge difference. And the, my website is trying to focus parents, um, Hispanic parents, and, um, to be more involved in school and talk to the parents, because there's counselors that can translate, and they will, um, they will make a difference in their child's life. Uh, the process of my project. Well, first of all, I had to come up with an idea. As I mentioned before, I want to become a pediatrician. But when I got to this class, I didn't know what my plan was. I knew I wanted something to do with education and my career. So I, I thought it, and I was thinking about it. And then I came up with a TV show, which um, my friend at the bar encouraged me to do. She gave me some ideas. So I was like, yeah, a TV show, that would be wonderful. And then a week later, I was like, no, that's going to take more than one year. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I should change it to a toy. And then I was like, there's already many two toys out there for kids. Maybe I should focus on the parents more than the children, because there are already many programs and toys out there and resources for the children, but not as many for the parents. So I decided to do that. Like, our research. So we had to do this 10 page research, which we're not used to. Uh, and I was really disappointed when I got it up, when they told us, we have to write a 10 page research. And I was like, oh, y'all better mention that at the beginning of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, so well, I can't drop out no more. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do all this research. We had to do research academic journals and all of that, which I really found really interesting. All of my articles really were really interesting and I really got into it. So all of that lead to my website. As I mentioned before, the research was a big huge part of that because it helped me get all the information to put in my website, like what specific things parents uh, or children may be looking for in a website and then I created a feedback form, which I will get later on. Uh, my website. <coughs> I created my website of for early childhood. As you can see, uh, once you get here, you get to the home page, and 
I, I put a little description of what early childhood is, because every parent or whoever goes and visits this website has to have a description of what this website is about. Then I put uh, about us, and then I went to the book section. The book section, I decided to focus on English parents. So my website originally was all English, and it was I thought I was done, and then I emailed it to my mentor, Dora Rodriguez. She's a Maynard elementary teacher, and she was like, "Well, Maynard is full of Hispanic parents. Maybe you should focus more on that." And I was like, "Oh, are you serious? But I'm almost done." <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to her. I'm glad I listened to her. And so I decided to focus. I did in English, um, Spanish, and then I did in war. The bilingual section is half English, half Spanish. So both parents, Spanish and English parents. You can use it as a research. Then I went to the activities, you know, which it's just basically activities for the parent uh, and the child to work together and learn. Uh, before, it was just a PDF file. They didn't look like that. It was just a PDF, it says PDF. Mm -hmm. And then my mentor was like, she sent me a feedback saying, well, that's boring, you should change it. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> So I did, I was messing with it, I screwed my website like twice, and then I was really mad. But I kept doing it, and one time I got it done. All the um, icons were fixed and everything, and then I let me save. So I got my quit, I quit for that day. I was really disappointed, and then the next day I was like, I have to get this done, I have to fix it. So I went and fixed it, and then I went to the game section. Uh, some parents may think that the, uh, some games are not useful for their children, but it depends what type of games you're learning, you, the child is playing. There's so many different types of games, and you have to choose the right ones for your child and for yourself. I decided to focus on educational games. Educational games are um, really important for a child because they they think that they're playing and they're having fun, but their brains like observing. Um, all this information and keeping it there. As I, uh, if you click on the first game, uh, which I'm going to go to a link, and it has a game section, and it's really helpful. Like you have to, you can choose the level that you want. And I was playing it uh, with this Perry um, for this presentation, and the little cute sound. But I got really into it. <laughs> but I have played these games before, I'm not going to deny it, they're fun, <laughs> if, even if they're for kids, I have fun, <laughs> so they're really cute, um, so all the kids will enjoy it as well as the parents, and then I did one to articles, I did a section for articles, this section, it's not for the kids, it's for the parents itself, um, I have three main um, P PDF files, um, the pictures are PDFs, so if you click, you will download. Uh, and then, then I have the abstract of the uh, PDFs. This PDF focuses on early childhood and what is it and how parents can be more involved in schools and activities for their kids. And it will help, it will give you more tips if you want more tips on what to do with your child. And then I did a toy section. As I mentioned before, toys are, are really fun too. I play toys. <laughs> My brothers have lots of toys, and I still play with them because they're fun. <laughs> I'm a little child from inside. <laughs> uh, so each um, 